two, when on the set, the director is often heard shouting, lights, sound, camera, action. Have we ever thought why lights come first? What is light? How can you control light? How do you design with light to answer these and more, especially in context of spectacular shows and immersive experiences, our master speaker today, Venu Pastricha will be talking about this illuminated subject. This will give us an opportunity to learn about lighting installations, lighting festivals, interactive light, sonnet lumiers, and more. Lights change the mood, evoke emotional response. The objective being to communicate the ideas, entertain, and educate the audience, add to the experience. Whether it is theater, feature film, stage plays, or outdoors. Lighting is essential in setting the time and place. Our creative community is well-versed with industry jargons, key light, fill light, black lights, and so on. While these remain, a digital layer is set on top to help synchronize and more. Vinu Pastricha joined AV Workshop in 1987 as Chief AV Programmer. He set up AV Graphics in 1988. Coming from a family of three generations of photographers, a graduate of IIT Delhi, he brings his technical and creative skills not only in graphics and audio visual production, but also in the design and programming of lights. The Digital Arts Forum is our design and art community that covers all forms of digital design and art, from fashion design to virtual reality to films and lights. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Forum Days, the most Great collaborative knowledge and projects that span multiple disciplines catalyzed by this new thinking and knowledge. Here is an opportunity to learn, interact, share, and discover. I now request Deepak to run the introduction, Amy. gentlemen, please welcome Vinu Pastrija, shedding light on light, quintessential element of shows and experiences. Hi guys, good evening, welcome everyone. Uh, and I'm glad that you guys, whoever are attending are interested in this topic of light, because this has been my passion for a very long time. So I've, uh, I've been an AV guy. I started with AVs and I, I then branched out and converted myself into programming sound and light shows and Sonne Lumiere's. But essentially I'm a storyteller. So now I tell stories through light and that is the perspective that I will bring to what is light. Because light can be many things and we don't want to get into scientific things about photons and, and speed of light and numerical values like that, etc. I'm talking about the perspective of light from the element of storytelling. So um, what I'd like to do without any further ado is to take you to a very nice presentation that I put together. And um, um, so you will be able to get a lot from this particular thing. So let's start with this. And, and before we go anywhere else, I'd like to take you to this word quintessential. Um, it's a very unusual word and, and the description or the direct dictionary meaning of it says, representing the most perfect or typical example of a quality or class. 
and that fits in very appropriately with with the topic and what we intend to do with light today so the first question that that uh, that i will try and answer is what is light now for this i'm just going to borrow a definition which has been coined by a lighting designer friend of mine a very famous lighting designer gautam bhattacharya and gautam described it as follows light is the absence of darkness like a painter who paints with his colored pigments on a blank white canvas a lighting designer paints with light on a blank black canvas and therein lies the difference that we start with a blank black canvas now for me coming from a background of photography and avs light is the very basis for imaging and whether it be photography um uh, to be able to capture or on digital media any image or be the basis of projection or in fact for that matter the basis of even seeing being able to see something is also dependent on light so therefore light plays a very important part over there now in order to use light one of the conventional ways of looking at it is that we need a form or a structure we need something which is three dimensional which has got a shape a depth a perspective in order for us to throw light on it and then you are able to see the light and see what all is the result that it produces but another way of looking at it is that if you have a beautiful object if you have a lovely looking object which has got some inherent beauty on it in order to bring out that beauty you need good lighting to be able to bring it up bring, make it look good even whether it's an inanimate inanimate object like a sculpture or the human form and artists on stage uh, naturally with you know being lit up and being able to portray them very beautifully that's one very inherent uh, thing that light can ever do is is bring out the beauty and to my mind the most perfect thing that you can light up is the human body it is the most perfect shape yeah. and going further in fact the face is just the most incredible thing that you can play around as far as light is concerned now let's move on to the next question how can you control light or if i were to ask that question in another way what can you control about light so what are what are the aspects of light that you can control so let's ask that question first and let's go from there so one of the things that you can control about light is the brightness of light and the brightness of light is essentially controlled by the the most important aspect which is the brightness of its light source the wattage of the lamp that you're using and uh, i'll give you an example here now this is a, a range of lamps which are all the par lamps or or as the expanded form is the parabolic aluminized reflector lamps they are all essentially the same kind of construction they produce a beam of light but you get them from par 16 to par 64 and the par 16 would be about uh, a 35 watt kind of a fixture going up to par 64 which is a 1000 watt fixture and then you have the entire range in between of 50 watts 75 watts uh, 120 watts uh, 300 watts 500 watts 1000 watts so this is the, the 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 power lights the next thing that you can control about light is the beam angle how wide do you want the beam to be so you can have a narrow spot which is about a 4 to 6 degree or 7 degree kind of a narrow spot to a spot which is 12 degrees to 20 degrees somewhere in that region or a flood which is about 20 to 30 degrees that kind of a region and the wide flood so those are the kind of different kinds of light configuration each manufacturer has its own different degrees but you can get pretty much this is the major classification of it so that's the other thing that you define about light and here is an example of using a very narrow beam light this is a practical example so here 7 degree fixtures were used to light up these columns in front of the select city walk in delhi and here the brief was that the light should not spill over onto the hotel rooms behind it there is no way that those colors light should ever fall on the curtains or the rooms so a narrow beam was chosen so that it would remain within the pillar itself and not go anywhere else 
and this worked very beautifully it just suddenly popped out the 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 whole building and the structure and then there was a dynamic aspect to it where the light could be chosen and like if you see the scheme on the right that was the scheme that was run during the republic day or the independence day uh, week um, so that that worked out pretty well the other aspect they could control about light is its position and focus where do you place the light and where do you aim at it now just look at this a single human is the light starting from full on in front of the face to going all the way around the the head and back to the front but at the same level as the head the top row is the light being placed about 45 degrees above and aim downwards and pointing at the same head and the other the, the third row at the bottom is the light at the at the bottom here so you can notice the difference i mean just look at the nose for example in the first column of pictures the shadow below the nose to the flatness of the nose and then the lighting which is coming from underneath the nose and how it changes the whole perspective of how you see the face the same face can appear with different moods the whole mood can change just by how where you place that same light nothing else has changed i'll give you a practical world example of this this is a 20 foot high krishna uh, uh, statue of lord krishna which is at the mahabharat museum in kurukshetra we had to do a 10 minute long show on this which was about the gita updesh and had to show different moods of krishna uh, the virat roop the vishal roop the rodra roop etc all all the different kinds of moods had to be there so again just by taking the same face and playing around with the position of the light and the lighting the color of the light we were able to bring out different aspects to his mood and be able to convey and tell the story so that worked out very well another aspect that you can control about light is the color of the light what color do you want to put on that particular object and that also changes the whole per perception of how you view that particular object and color can be controlled by either putting a filter in front of a light that does not have an inherent capability of changing color which can be a gel filter or a dichroic glass filter or you can have uh, more intelligent lights which have uh, cmy mixing within it and that allows it to to give some color and now of course you have the led lighting which have the lighting itself has its own rgb red green blue and even colors like amber and other specific tones that you can get out of it depending on what manufacturer you can even produce uv light for that matter out of led so mixing those will also produce all the entire gamut of color that you want to create when it comes to white light one important aspect that you have to focus on is something called the color temperature of the light the color temperature of the light is measured in degrees kelvin and starting if you see this visual starting from 1000 degrees kelvin which is a very warm yellow light to 10000 degrees kelvin which is a very cool blue light the whole range is portrayed and depending on what your usage is uh whether you want to use white light from point of view of rendering good color or whether you want to try and give something a warm tone or a cool tone you can choose which light you can go for uh natural daylight is somewhere in the region of about 4000 to 5000 degrees kelvin uh you also have fixtures that are available these days that are called tunable white fixtures which mean that they have a warm led and a cool led and you can mix them and produce whatever range of uh tonality of color or color temperature of color in between the two that you can do that so that's this is another aspect what you can control of light the final element is that you can control the fading and fading out of light so how bright or dim is the light getting you can you after all chosen a fixture based on the maximum brightness you want but then when you are actually using it you can actually want you might want to have it dim or have it bright oh during a show or during thing you might want to fade it in or fade it out so that's another aspect that you want to control about the light now amongst all these things that you can control about light there is one very important aspect which all lighting designers beg for but it will never happen is to control the distance of how far light will travel if we were to ever be able to control that that if we were to say okay the light should only go to the foreground or the subject but not fall on the background 
you can't do it there is no light as yet that you can say okay go 50 feet only and then stop don't go any further some day maybe there might be something some signs that might come out that might do it but let's hope so now i'll move on to the topic what is lighting design so here is something that i've coined my own definition for it and 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 see these visuals and i'll read it out lighting design is all about placing the right type of light which means um, beam angle color temperature um, wattage brightness etc at the right location focused in the right direction and dim to the right brightness and then a combination of these lights produces a spectacle and it also helps to bring out the form to its full beauty and another aspect of lighting design is especially from the point of view of what i do which is storytelling is the timing of the light when should the light come on or when it should go off as part of the show or part of the story that is also an aspect of lighting design that we would like to consider otherwise it is about bringing out the the beauty or the communication that you want to get out of the particular object or feature that you're trying to light up now we started if you remember with saying that in order to see light you need a form or a structure to light up but there is another whole different way of looking at at light when light itself becomes a form or a structure so here is an example of light as a form where look at this for example where it is not it does not matter where the light is falling or what it is falling on but the fact that the light is creating a beam of light by passing through a haze or uh, through through some bit of smoke it is able to you are able to see the shaft of the light and then therefore the shafts of the light are able to create a pattern which can be in a show can be a moving pattern so that itself is is a form a, a light as a form another way of seeing this is using electroluminescent lights or 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 they are available in tapes and in wires which can be strung up to create all kinds of shapes so these are electroluminescent wires which are light source itself fluorescent lights or led lights which are uh, created in some form and there is a certain depth given to it so that it looks beautiful and looks interesting uh, shapes lit internally so light as a form and uh, so all these is another different way of looking at it where you see the the luminescent aspect of light now in a lot of the storytelling we have an aspect of interactivity that we can also consider as far as lighting is concerned so how does light interact with the viewer or how do you as a viewer interact with the light or the object that is being lit up etc that can be something that can be also considered and there that's in different forms so here i'll show you three specific forms that i've been able to broadly categorize in so one aspect of lighting is when it's pre programmed light that means that the lighting designer has programmed a sequence that he wants the audience to specifically see and you interact with it by being anywhere as part of what your viewing angle is and being able to see that particular uh, installation or effect that the lighting is produced so you look at this and and the lighting surrounds you the lighting is all around you and it's following a particular pattern it is not really influenced by where you are or how you're moving but at the same time you are interacting with the light because it's falling on you it's going all around you and it, it's moving with respect to you another aspect of interactivity is sensor based interactivity when sensors feel and see what you're doing and the light interacts with what how you behave or move your hands or your body and and move around it so you look at this particular installation lighting installation that's that someone has done which is a, a, a little balls uh, translucent balls lit by laser which are interacting with uh, how the people are moving around it or how they're moving their hands etc and produces a very nice effect another form of interactivity is um, what i would term as mechanical interactivity where by moving yourself 
you change the perspective of how you view a particular object or you view the light form so by moving the whole perception changes and you are able to discern uh, different things or different shapes and, and and you can see over here i mean how it's changed from light to the word dark just by you moving around and interacting with it um this is some uh, something that we were able to use at one point of time your uh, your presentation is not uh, visible on the screen uh, the, yeah now now it's good yeah so uh, this particular installation if you see the, the, the this blue wall on the right hand side uh, this was installed in a in a place called gigabyte which was a food court in a in a in a mall in ludhiana and it was designed as a mechanical uh, in, interactive installation for people uh, it changed colors it, it did some things but essentially if you look at it you can see that there are these kind of little holes appearing within the within the mesh uh, uh, as i as i show you some more images you will be able to see it more clearly so here you see that there is a mesh but within due to the interactivity of two meshes uh, it's an interactive which is a very scientific fact called moir patterns you are able to discern some hollow holes that form and these holes would change perception depending on how far or how close you were and the depth also kept changing how you did it here so this was a practical example of how we used mechanical interactivity in actual physical location in 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 this place okay uh, briefly going to talk about lighting control protocols there are numerous ways to control all these lights the different lights that are there um uh, people have come up with over the years this is like some bit of it they are always constantly evolving new lighting protocols always coming out i'll draw your attention to two specific ones if you look at uh, the top left corner there is the dali protocol which is by and large been adopted for most architectural lighting uh, if you look at the bottom right hand corner there's dmx512 that has been adopted by most entertainment and show industry lighting so for theaters uh, auditoriums and performances that is the kind of lighting that is used and that is the lighting that i use also for home automation the form of lighting control that is gathering a lot of strength is wifi and bluetooth that is now being used a hell of a lot um this is an example of how uh, dmx can be used from the console uh, this red line which depicts dmx is daisy chain to various intelligent light fixtures and dimmers and you are able to address each one individually and each parameter of these individually and do whatever you want control them so you can create a whole network of uh, of lights which are hooked up through to your console and you are able to issue whatever command you want okay i'm now going to talk about lighting installations and uh, on the face of it i mean there are lighting installations which go back in time there's a lot of traditional lighting installations that we have uh, from our fairs and festivals and one of the most obvious ones we all know about is diwali or deepavali deepavali effectively is a lighting installation because people create all kinds of shapes and and forms using diyas and candles and and beautify their houses etc that that is definitely a lighting installation uh there is for example this aomari nibuta matsuri from japan which is large floats and they've been there from time immemorial they are internally lit they used to be lit earlier on by candles then by incandescent lights then fluorescent lights and now of course led lights but there are these glowing floats that they parade on the road uh, as part of this festival the festival of lights in lyon which is again a, 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 a religious festival where the whole city gets lit up uh, hanuka a, a jewish festival which is again using candles etc that's also a festival of lights um the lantern festival of taiwan and several other places in canada and southeast asia also it is held um i would even consider the pumpkin festival i mean the pumpkin becomes beautiful just because of the lighting that is installed in it to show off the form and the cutouts so that's also a lighting installation we now come to what are modern lighting installation there are a whole lot of lighting festivals that have been now developed and institutionalized which are being held across the world in different parts of the world where lighting designers from all over the world are invited 
who come up and do their installations and show off these things and a whole city enjoys a lighting festival so some examples are this vivid sydney in australia um, amsterdam light festival where the lighting installations are done on top of the canals and beautiful things are created where people are walking around are able to enjoy it um, the festival of lights in berlin where they also use projection which is by the way again projecting light to change the form and shape of uh, some of the structures around in the place again uh, from festival of lights in berlin this is a uh, frankfurt the luminale um, again some different form of electro electroluminescent lighting um, leon again uh, am uh, netherlands has got a fairly rich tradition of these festivals amsterdam is one of them and this is another one the glow festival in eindhoven which is also beautiful look at this one which is just shadows casting um, shapes on the ground uh, creating such interesting looking thing and the lumiere festival in london so these are few of the examples now i've spoken to you about um, this is from calgary canada spoken to you about international festivals we are now trying to bring this into india as well and one of the first attempts at this was something called light first that was held right here in new delhi uh, a couple of years ago at the italian ambassador's residence where seven uh, lighting designers were invited and set up about 15 odd installations around uh, the, the gardens and really beautiful things were created out of that so here's here's some examples of shots of that particular thing right in this foreground you can see uh, something created by vibhor sogani uh, this uh, shank which is a completely without light it would not have been anything this is a pure lighting installation up on the top that stand out of my light is a is a design created by manav bhargav uh, another good lighting designer from india uh, these two are from uh, an installation done by design matrix again another installation by vibhor sogani uh, some of these installations were also site specific installations so they took this passageway which was arches and they used lighting and programmed it with with dynamic effects to create a a, a visual uh, an installation that was created only because the site had these arches uh one of the lighting installations uh, done over there was something called four seasons which was designed by a, another uh, very good lighting designer called Linus Lopez uh, i also was part of the team Uh, helped with the interactivity and the programming of it this was a a, a lighting um, installation which interestingly enough covered a lot of things it was a designed form this particular stretched fabric on hoops could if you touched it it wobbled it shook back and forth so there was that aspect of interactivity then the light changed there was a touch screen that you chose which of the seasons that you wanted to view there was audio track there was video that was being projected so it was covering every aspect there was tactile there was video there was audio there was light and there was a touch screen so here here are things like you you basically on an ipad touch whichever season you wanted to view and then some thing would get projected about it and an audio track would run this is a very heavily planned out um, Installation, though it used only nine lights, but uh, very interestingly done. Here's a little little video clip that shows you how the the curved stretch fabric form uh, handled the lighting, both inside and outside. So created some very nice effects. Of course, camera can never really capture what you see with your naked eye. That's always uh, really the interesting thing. Um. i'd like to go and show you another example of an interesting structure that we let up as part of a storytelling experiment this was the jharkhand war memorial in ranchi and the the specific structure was called the shrine so this is a very space age kind of a structure which was made with these specific hexagonal petals four petals and the and the 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 center um, shrine in there and from the architect's perspective this was to represent the five elements the center had the flame and around it these were the four petals of the four other elements air water fire sky um earth sorry 
um, and so we had a real challenge when we when we looked at it and said how we are going to light this particular thing here and it had to be from the storytelling perspective that meant that whatever we lit it up we had to be able to control that lighting very specifically so each uh, specific um, petal had to be a different color at different points of time uh, i explored the possibility of even tacking on uh, led neon lighting to the edges of it because spillage was a very important aspect if i lit it from the ground 90% of the light was going to go into the air and just disappear without lighting up the structure uh, and then it might also spill over into other elements which were not meant to be lit at that point of time so i tried thinking of lighting up on the edges but i said okay this is a 50 foot high structure i will install the lighting and go away but in the future how will people repair it or you know every time something goes wrong how will they fix it so finally we were able to work out a very perfect lighting design which required only 16 lights and these 16 lights by taking perfect care of precisely locating where they should come in we were able to a either color the the whole thing in the same color in one color or little differential colors or each leaf as a specific color of its own to represent the four elements Uh, i was able to since this was a war memorial and therefore uh, there was a uh, infantry division uh, assigned to it so we did the colors of the infantry division that was white and red we were able to do that and we even did it as a tricolor for some places of the show so very specifically we were able to get and notice that there is no spill it's almost like each thing is individually lit which is like a real challenge um, so this was this was part of a sound and light show and coming to that this is really where my forte lies i do lighting and control of lighting for storytelling for telling stories stories through sound and light sonalomia shows so here are some examples of visuals of shows that i have been involved in so this is the chitorgarh fort in rajasthan uh, very beautifully lit uh, with different kinds of lighting different colors etc grades and to create the kind of story and look that we want to This is a Somnath temple where it's a combination of projection mapping and lighting to cover the entire temple. Um, this is uh, the Khajuraho uh, temples sound and light show. This was installed quite a ways back in 1999, and it's with huge restrictions because of it being a very uh, heritage structure, world heritage structure. The Udaipur city palace. These are some few of the examples that are there. Warangal Fort sound and light show, which is. done on basically a lot of pillars this i call it a pillar show huge number of pillars and the cellular jail in port blair kala pani as you, as you also know it so this is another interesting show beautiful story to tell and very effectively told by the the lighting and the the show the track that is made on this and this is the chandragiri fort sound and light show which is very close to tirupati just 20 kilometers out of tirupati so i'll now show you uh, uh i'll just go back i'll just show you now a little snippet about a 4 minute snippet from one of the shows just to give you an idea of how programming is able to do something with a particular show and before i show it i'm showing you a clip from the jharkhand war memorial sound and light show uh, the jharkhand war memorial sound and light show the the there's no fort and there's no heritage story to tell so this was specifically story about the martyrs of jharkhand we stuck to the story of the martyrs of jharkhand so we 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 are covering uh, from uh, pre british times to uh, current times covering the martyrs of even the army the current post uh, independence but even before that buddu bhagat birsa munda and all these kind of people um the important aspect was that we had to use all kinds of features over there one of which was this very interesting space age structure called the shrine which obviously could not fit in in any kind of a historical story so we made it our narrator we also used a projection screen so we were able to in some sequences also project a little bit onto the screen which also worked very well but mostly we used trees and bushes to be able to tell our story because a lot of the sequences were located in in forests and places like that in villages and forests so they they fitted in very beautiful and and it's a very theatrical style of storytelling so you you'll see a 
short four minute clip and you would be able to enjoy it so let me just take you without any further ado to that. sorry to interrupt here uh, we are running a little short on time uh, just see this for a minute kulsharan that that would i would that's it There's nothing more for that blank screen can you run it again mai pratik hu srishti ke panch tattva ka mere garbh mein agni deh prithvi dhamniya hai jal pran hai vayu aur mere charo or hai aakash गोंडवाना प्रदेश झारखंड पे जब जब अदाताइयों ने जुल्म खाया मैं अग्नि बन भवक उठा अपने लोगों के लहु में मैंने उनके कान कहा मेरे गर्भ में छुपा है अग्नि सरी का लाल लोहा उसे बाहर निकालो अग्नि में पिघलाओ और तैयार करो औजार तैयार होने लगे भाले बर्छे तीन और वी डू नथिंग इज विजिबल टीचर साहब खाए होने के बाद एक तेजी से बंकर छोड़ आता हुआ आगे बढ़ता जा रहा है हम नॉर्दर्न एंड पे पहुंचने ही वाले एक सामने वाली इमारत की ऊपरी मंजिल से गोली चल रही है यहाँ से हमला करना मुश्किल है ओनली ऑडियो देयर we uh, 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 didn't get the uh, clip but yes heard the audio sorry i said uh, we couldn't see the video but we heard the audio so uh, <laughs> you can wind up now <laughs> all right all right perfect so that's it that, that was the last bit of my of my uh, presentation i ended up with that so i mean I, i think i fairly well covered the aspect of lighting related to the aspect of shows and experiences and storytelling uh, i know how relevant it is and what you can so do so interesting as i said in the beginning itself you know it evokes uh, emotional response you know mm. uh, lights also uh, change the mood the way uh, we uh, light up anything else outside or inside the house and uh, yes indeed you know uh, it adds a lot of flavor to it the colors right so uh, whether it is a form of uh, structure moving patterns you know you talked about electro luminous lights control lights interactivity programmed and pre programmed lights you know one element that comes in that's digital for which we have an evangelist who is talking about how to leverage technology to help increase output convert you know such creative ideas into reality talking about you know technology as an enabler for creative pros mr wilton suresh pangoria creative manager mobile workstation virtual reality data science strategic growth initiatives at hp over to you thanks dr dhanjil uh, it was a nice presentation i was flabbergasted uh, by mr vinu so light as we say is is you know when it comes to creativity light is the thing it's a emotion it's a information for us uh, for for a visual uh, for a uh, uh, for a users right so light is something what you know in when it comes to visualization over the screen or when it comes to digital platform so it's a very interesting topic to be discussed right if you talk about from a perspective of animation or games you know or or uh, 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 movies it's very tough to produce or reproduce an actual lights effect on that so light is a drastic effect on the feel how the feel, how a user or a i mean the viewer will feel on games movies and photography right specific light techniques are used specifically for animation and games because that is where these lights has to be reproduced actually so this in digital form you know in digital form it is called as ray tracing so what is ray tracing ray tracing is something is a technique that makes light in video games or in uh, animation behaves like as in real life it works by simulating actual ray lights using the algorithm to trace the path of the beam or the source 
so ray, ray tracing is actually a big big jargon in today's world for animation and video game business uh, for for the guys who are into creation of vr or the guys who are creating who are in the business of creating games and if you are serious about games you know what differentiate between a good animation a bad animation or a good video game or a bad video game it's not the content it's not it's not how it has been controlled or what is the story behind the video game it's actually how lighting is being you know simulated or how the ray tracing is been done and in fact there are now in fact if you talk about there are specific graphics cards available specific uh, mobile workstation and workstations are available so from nvidia nvidia has already introduced a quadro rtx graphics card a professional grade graphics card so rtx is sent for ray tracing so these graphics card is specifically designed to emulate light to simulate light on animation or on games or on our movies so if you see there are a lot of you know games which is coming up with now with shadows lot of games which 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 comes with a real time you know li uh, real time live uh, light tracing like for example if there is a bomb blast happens actual rays of light been captured and emulated over a video game or on an animation so this rtx brings a lot of uh, 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 you know technology when it comes to animation or when it comes to a ray tracing or a reproduction of light so from a hp perspective we have got complete solution on ray tracing so these are this rtx was also called as touring course which has got a rtx course or ray tracing course the complete solution on mobile workstations with rtx graphics card you can go up to 16 gb of dedicated graphics card on mobile platform so if you want a mobility or if you are a gamer or if you are gaming designer or if you are or if you are a vr content designer wherein you have to play a lot of time with lights and in fact on on desktop workstation you can go up to 96 gb of dedicated graphics with rtx 8000 graphics card two two of the rtx 8000 can be put in a, work, a desktop workstation so that is a massive thing what we are talking about and it has actually changed the entire entire animation and gaming industry how we see and perceive the game or how we see or perceive the animation for that sense so that's a technology bit on on light from 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 my side excellent i i'm sure you know uh, here there is a, a, a match of uh, technology with the creativity and uh, obviously you know uh, the technology will always enhance the uh, creative output you know that's precisely uh, what the message uh, that comes uh, very clear uh, uh, you know uh, from uh, what you spoke uh, with you just now so at this moment uh, you know uh, we have uh, two very important uh, you know uh, guests with us Uh, Jijo John is uh, a veteran uh, documentary and filmmaker and MD of uh, Wismaya Films. He's also uh, uh, you know, produced a feature film called The King's Lost Palace, and uh, that's one of his acclaimed uh, productions. Have run on uh, several channels uh, uh, worldwide. So Jijo, uh, when it comes to uh, particularly the uh, creative lighting, and uh, how is it that? Uh, you know the technology has helped you or otherwise you know you have done it uh, the creative stuff without the help of technology how possibly can be done better so uh, would you like to bring your perspective on the table please please unmute yourself unmute yourself yeah it is uh, see the uh, i saw the presentation of uh, venus uh, work is amazing uh, work and uh, and explain it very well but i think uh, if you compare with the films and other uh, the, the films and other product uh, this thing is concerned uh, the, the lighting uh, it's, it's it's depending on that proper you uh, know the totally on the characters which we play uh, uh, for the things and i have done many films and all and uh, grushan was mentioning the kings of lost palace which is documentary basically so documentary doesn't need much uh, kind of lights uh, in both video because it is all shot in outside but uh, what why we do the the any sort of uh, video is concerned the, the lights are actually uh, you know uh, uh, presented it in a different way uh, the uh, the way that um, uh, it is slightly different than the uh, the way uh, vino is actually presented but i have one small question to vino uh, if you can uh, uh, say that um, Uh, it is an amazing uh, way of uh, doing it, and uh, how large number of uh, team members actually associated with this kind of uh, lighting uh, projects? Uh, if he, he can tell me, or uh, also if anything, uh, uh, any any uh, any difficult situations in your uh, in your career that you overcome with uh, you know any with uh, any sort of project, if you can just explain in a small thing, uh, and it will be good for. 
Okay. So, uh, firstly, uh, when when it comes to say, like, okay, give you an example of this Jharkhand War Memorial show. It was a team of about fifty people who worked on it, from uh, right from script writers, translators, music composers, uh, voices. We had almost uh, fifteen different voices for each language. Um, we had a uh, sound team which produced the sound effects um, the 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 mixing the recording etc and then mastering it to get to the perfect level uh, then we had the visual team which was doing the shooting they did uh, the gathering of all the the images the archival images that were required all the illustrations uh, then the animation and creating the visual track uh there was uh, the technical team uh, sorry the lighting design team that basically did the lighting design and decided where to place each episode and how the different kinds of fixtures would be placed where they would be placed um and which kind of lighting fixtures would come then of course the light itself came from a god knows how many different manufacturers because they all had to be very specialized lighting and then there was the technical team which translated all this into a a, a whole form and structure of how the circuits would be defined where all they would go plan all that out and then the the installation and then doing the whole direction of this was also one big task so actually more than 50 people worked on this particular task oh, okay um an interesting uh, <laughs> anecdote that i would like to share with you in as part of uh, one of my experiences oh, it is all live shows <laughs> it was was we did a show at the rashtrapati bhavan for the president's bodyguard Uh, and we've done it over many many years this is a part of something called the silver trumpet and trumpet banner presentation ceremony that okay. is held once every 5 years every time the president changes so it's a very grand spectacle held in the forecourt of the rashtrapati bhavan the rashtrapati bhavan is all lit up beautifully we've done projection mapping onto the rashtrapati bhavan the forecourt lighting coordinated av with uh, uh, movement of horses and everything else and since i was directing most of the creative elements including giving cues to the president's bodyguard for the horses they also gave me a walkie talkie the 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 army people to coordinate with the president's buggy when it had to come now in the rehearsals it all went perfectly yeah, because i would pick up the walkie talkie at the precise time and it had to be done with army precision you know dot on time buggy commander buggy march i'd give the command and promptly 30 seconds later from the arch the buggy would appear and it would come in and we would sound the 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 bugles to welcome the president day of the final show time comes i give the command buggy commander buggy march 30 seconds pass 1 minute pass no buggy we wait another minute still no buggy again i give the command buggy commander buggy march again minute 2 minutes pass still no buggy so we are all shitting bricks what is happening here third time that i give the command after about almost 5 6 minutes the buggy commander comes onto the walkie talkie and said sir president aaye to main buggy chalau na abhi tak to aaye nahi hai <laughs> so we, we we hadn't planned for this particular thing that the president could be late <laughs> the, the president at that point of time was uh, uh, president abdul kalam and he was the most gracious and the most wonderful human being who came and how he uh, interacted with everyone But that 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 is one episode I can never forget. It was just too hilarious. I know. I mean, uh, as far as this creative field is concerned, it's uh, full of uh, surprises because you know you are dependent on so many elements together. Hmm. And uh, what if the buggy came and the lights didn't come on? <laughs> you know, it would have been another four part. <laughs> so anything uh, you know um, uh, happens in uh, when you are on the sets. So in fact, you know, uh, I have uh, Josie Joseph with me. Uh, while uh, Jijo probably would have used lights in a in a real setting. Josie being a caricaturist and a cartoonist uh, being uh, you know for years with Malayala Manorama leading it now running an uh, institute of design uh, you know helping a whole lot of students uh, getting into the creative field he uses his sketches and uh, how the light falls on it from which side and and another you know that's another element so Josie so what would you like to say and uh, in case you have a question go ahead unmute yourself please yeah Jos Joseph I'm Jos Joseph yeah uh You can hear me now. Yes. Yes. Okay. I am from Cochin. I am speaking to you from Cochin. Okay. Even though I was in Delhi for 
20, 25 years now, for the last 10 years, I am here in Kochi. Uh, here, a big event used to happen, which is, that's called Kochi Biennale. Kochi Biennale. It is about uh, Musiris Kochi Biennale, it is called Art Fest. It used to happen every two years. And this is about to start in the month of uh, December, December to April, it will happen. Artists from all over the world used to actually take part in this one. A lot of uh, light shows used to happen. Uh, video art, installation art, uh, light shows, various events used to happen. Artists from all over the, I mean, great artists from all over the world used to actually take part in that. Uh, I remember one uh, light show which has happened about 20, 25 years ago in Bombay. Some French artists has actually made some demonstration. Uh, it was in the sky, actually. They made lighting arrangements in the sky, on the beach. It would be a big canvas for you if you actually organize such an event. And it's, it's nobody is actually paying for it. It's just a voluntary work. Artists, uh, fraternity, you to actually come and make this presentation. Uh, I wish if you have such plan or do you have any such intent, intention to do uh, light show because it's actually a fest. It's an art fest, light fest. It's a show of light, actually, on the beach of uh, Kochi. Nothing on technical aspects. I just admire his work. It's amazing, actually. Yeah, to Mr. Pastrija. You know, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, Joe, I, I wasn't able to gather. Is there a question in there for me? It is not a question. It's just a request. <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing it that no, your work is so great. I know it, a lot of people from all over the world used to actually come to see this great show. Yes. And uh, you're showcasing your work will be a great uh, uh, arena for making yeah. this presentation well, for the... Uh, amateurs also. <laughs> but the nice, the nice thing about doing sound and light shows actually is the permanent aspect of it. That that unlike a lot of the things which are just set up for a little while or run for a week or two weeks, etc., or something like that. These are things that that you set up and you want them to remain there for for fifteen years at least. So there is that aspect of permanence. Uh, uh, the if, if you recall the Red Fort sound and light show which was set up way back in 1977. And then it was finally pulled down only uh, last to last year. That ran for, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. almost 40 odd years before it was, uh, it, it, it was scrapped. Yeah. So that was like a huge running show. But the interesting thing about the permanent show is that you have to then put in your creative best. You cannot afford to have even the little bit left as a, regret saying, oh, I wish I'd done that. Because it's going to haunt you every damn day. Every time you go and see that show, it'll be there. And you cannot leave anything that anybody else can question, I, I, whether it be an historical fact, because your researchers and your historians have to be perfect, whether it be anything on the creative side that somebody did not speak a word properly or something like that, you cannot do that. Or the lighting design. So you have to just make sure that it is, you know, Put through the grinding mill again and again and again until you make sure that what is the output is just bang on perfect. So that's a great aspect of permanent shows. Wonderful. It was uh, quite refreshing, uh, you know, to uh, look at uh, lights because you know, uh, uh, it's as it is said, the light at the end of the tunnel. That means there is hope. The, yeah. uh, the eyes are getting lit, lit up. You know, then uh, that means you are uh, uh, looking for something great to happen in life. Uh, you, you switch on the lights at home just to, you know, to, you know, to bring life back into the house. So various <laughs> aspects to it, you know, uh, right from very, very uh, generic at the bottom to uh, what, uh, you know, you would have done by uh, you know, yeah. uh, bringing life to the dead monuments and uh, leaving a story around it. True. So thank you very much for uh, bringing in uh, that perspective. It was great to uh, have you with us. And uh, I thank uh, everyone uh, to be on the show. We know starting with you for being our master speaker, Wilton, uh, to talk about uh, the uh, you know the, the various elements in uh, bringing the creativity uh, right on the table. Uh, Jijo, uh, Joseph, uh, thank you all. And as I said uh, in the beginning itself, you know uh, uh, any any shoot starts with saying lights.
sound, camera, and action. And at the end, one says, back up. So, well, thank you very much. <laughs>